make a video today about my pedals because I get a question every couple of days. What pedals do you use? How do you set them up? What's your spring tension, etc., etc. So I thought I'd just make a video that I can point people to. My basic pedals are Tama, Iron Cobra, Power Glide, obviously double, right-handed. They're from about 2000 or 2001, which makes them probably 13, 14 years old, which means that while they may not be the most expensive, they actually ha are incredibly durable. The only thing I've ever replaced is this connecting rod, because right here at the ends, these joints get a lot of play in them after a while, and then the left pedal has a lot of lag. The thing about this connecting rod that they did not get right yet is this hinge area right here. The problem is it gets really loose. These pins in here that actually create the joints uh, don't stay in very well. So you can probably hear if I'm quiet. That's a lot of play in that joint. So I've replaced that once, I might replace it again. The pedals themselves have held up well, multiple tours around the country, and they've been just fine. And I play pretty hard. I use the black rubber beaters. I can't stand the felt. If you have the felt and you're playing anything remotely like rock or metal, throw them out. Get the, uh, the rubber or the wood. That's a good choice too. Also have, you can see, the weights that come with it all the way at the top. Uh, the more weight you have at the top of the beater, the more inertia. So for single strokes, which is what I typically play, that's the best setup for me. Uh, if you play a lot of doubles, maybe think about dropping them down or taking them off. I have them attached so that the little drum key screw that holds them on points to the side. I always used to have it pointing back until I realized that if I should uh, mess up a stroke, play incorrectly and that uh, beater comes back and hits the top of my foot, that's really painful. Spring tension. You can see there's some threads left here, not all the way tight, but it's fairly tight. Okay, And I like that rebound because I don't like lifting my own foot up. Uh, call me lazy if you want, but I think that's a lot of extra work that I don't need to be doing. Um, if the pedal does the lifting, I can just do the pushing and I can play a lot faster and cleaner that way most of the time. And it's the same on both sides. You want to make sure that when you're playing double pedal that you have both sides the same. I've seen people with this pedal, you know, jacked around here crazy, um, different footboard heights, different spring tensions, different beater placements. You've got to love that when you see someone whose pedal sits there like this or like this when it's just at rest. How can you play evenly if your pedal doesn't even function evenly? You can adjust this slave side beater um, on its little uh, you know, hinged area here. And so from the factory it was all the way to the left, which put these beaters much farther apart. So I adjusted it to the center because as long as they're not touching, there's no reason they shouldn't be hitting as close together on the drum head as possible. And another thing to note is you can adjust the footboard height on these pedals, but you want to just make sure that when you hit the drum head, you're still clear of everything under here. If you're hitting it and getting a clicking sound, you need to raise it up a little bit because it's too low. So obviously the drum would be here and it's not hitting. Same thing for the slave pedal. So now we'll look at the slave side pedal here. Basically. There's not much to note over here except that these spurs that come out are vital to playing with a double pedal versus two bass drums. The problem is that these things can, even at this extreme extent of their you know, extension ability, they can just slide through the carpet over the course of a couple of songs. So you can see I've installed some Velcro on the bottom so that it actually grabs my carpet uh, not only at the front but also towards the back in two different ways. That helps me keep it a lot more stable. Sometimes I'll even put a hi-hat stand leg. You know I have the rotating base hi-hat stand. I'll stick it so that one of the legs is right behind the front of this pedal uh, to give it yet another thing to help it keep from just creeping away on me. These pedals come with these toe stops they are removable. You can kind of see the screw under there where I could take it off. I leave it on 
because for one thing, when you're playing a pedal, uh, most of the time you want to play from what's called the sweet spot, which is actually somewhere back here around the word cobra on this particular pedal. So there's not really any good reason for your foot to be sliding up to the chain anyway. So I just leave those on there and I think they're fine. And I will mention that I am not endorsing officially Tama pedals or Iron Cobra in any way. This is just what I happen to use. Uh, you can use whatever you want unless Tama starts paying me, in which case you better use Tama. Uh, hint, hint, Tama. Otherwise, if you have other questions, you can go ahead and ask. But that's the gist of this pedal that I use for everything.